Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Studio Pro. I wanted to make this video and introduce you specifically to the audio interface I use for remote live streams. It's the Revelator IO24 by Personas. And there it was, but letting you understand this, I'm in a room right now that is completely untreated acoustically. Glass behind me, hard walls around me, reflective surfaces like a big table right in front of me, all over the place. So please don't judge this interface by the audio it's producing right now because, yeah, the room is far less than optimal, to be very clear. But this interface, I cannot recommend enough because of its price point, because of its features, and everything it's capable of doing for you. And again, a big part of that is just the software side. It's the real-time digital signal processing of this interface, which could help you out, as I'll share and show in a live stream situation. But again, this is the setup I've been using. It's also important to let you know the Revelator uh, is plugged into what you can kind of see over here is my ATEM Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. I do have a hum eliminator between the interface and the actual switcher, the Blackmagic switcher, because what comes out of the Personas is balanced audio, and what goes into the back of the ATEM is unbalanced. So you will get a little bit of a hum, at least in this situation. It is important you know that if you're going to try this, you definitely need something in there to eliminate the hum. But just going back to the interface, uh, well-built, pretty easy to understand. Two inputs here. They can be mic or line level. There are some buttons on the front to control basic things with each channel, gain, phantom power, a low cut filter. There's the meters on the front, which you can obviously see. I also have it set up here in a very cool way uh, to hit the one of the two presets. You saw there that it, it just cut my audio off on purpose. That's kind of a mute button that I use. So the preset on top is my normal setting. If I push this button again, it cut all the audio to the live stream, right? Which is it's great. You have now a hardware button for muting your mic on the live stream. So again, why do I like this? It's a typical audio interface, but it is so much more than that when you get to the real-time digital signal processing. And here you can see I'm on channel one with the MKH416 microphone, and I do have a preset specifically for that. Um, that's what this is right here. I can change these all around, but uh, no need to. In fact, I can also take off the processing. Here you go. Here's what the mic sounds like completely unprocessed. Um, it's probably uh, different levels. Let me just check and make sure I'm not peeking. Yeah, it's, it just it doesn't sound the same though, does it? So now I'll put the processing back on. You can understand why you'd want processing on your live stream and why the Revelator is so awesome because in my headphones, no latency, no delay, no nothing. This is basically the effect that people want out of a universal audio, Apollo device, but you're getting it here in a fraction of the cost with the Presonus Revelator IO24. Okay, so I utilize the fat channel. Now, um, let's get into that part of it first, like the mic processing, and then let me also show you all of the mix minus capabilities of this interface, virtual devices, and how you can send different mix minuses back out to your remote audience. So let's dive into the fat channel here, and you can see that I can do everything on this mic signal. Now this is my chain for the 416 with the Revelator. I've got the high pass filter on at 40 hertz. I don't like to cut it too high with this mic. I try and keep it pretty natural sounding. Um, I actually do not use the noise gate slash expander, but I will experiment with it here. Watch as I turn it on and off. I'll give you a second to really turn up your volume and get a sound of, of yeah, there is room noise in here. There's air conditioning. There are some electrical units uh, and devices, I think, in the room next door. I hear noises in this room. It's not a quiet room by any means. It's acoustically untreated, but it's also noisy. Listen in. See that? Now I'm cutting pretty heavily there. In fact, it got a little bit chatty and choppy there when the gate was kind of uh, closing back up on me. So what? let me adjust the threshold here. And now you can see at its lowest level, there's a little bit of chatter in there. So I'm going to be honest with you. Sure, I could crank this thing up and I could use it like this. And for the most part on live streams, if people are listening and 
Uh, they're not discriminating too much on every last bit of the audio. They would never tell, and it would sound better because it is gated to a certain degree. But I could hear that gate closing right there. And even if I do the fastest attack and release possible, maybe that makes it sound just a little bit better. Yeah, in fact, it does, but oh, it chopped me off there. It, there's just a little bit too much noise in this gate, which is, by the way, in expander mode right now, as much as I play with the settings. So I'm going to... I'm actually going to turn it off for a second. Let me do the AB on and off. See, and it is cutting like 6, 10, maybe 12 dB when I turn it back on. Maybe even a little bit more. I just, I'm not a big fan of using expander or a gate in a room that is not treated because you're fighting a really uphill battle. If you're just trying to get rid of that last bit of noise or something in a treated space, no problem. That's what an expander can help you out with. That's what I do in the home studio. But here in this type of setting, uh, it's a lost cause. So I, I just don't use it. EQ wise for the 416, you can see that I'm putting on a pretty aggressive curve. I'm just trying to get more of a broadcasty type sound. And again, um, this is for me doing videos and live streams. I need that real-time signal processing. And yeah, to be perfectly honest, I prefer that it comes from the hardware unit like this, the Personas Revelator IO24. Um, I don't really want to do this all software. Um, I, like, I like the hardware side of this. I like tactile buttons if I want to mute the whole stream. I can also do that as well, too. Um, so all the audio that runs through my live stream goes through this device, including the virtual channels, which I will share and show you in just a second. Uh, but here's my EQ curve on the low end. I'm pushing 90 hertz at about 4 dB. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get the 416 to sound more like a large diaphragm condenser. I'm giving it some body. Then in the low mids, you can see that this low also comes with a bit of a cut here, probably... I don't know, at 120 hertz, something like that. It's a push here and a cut there. In the low mids, all the way up at 2,000 hertz, right, for the some of the fundamental frequencies, I'm pushing here up at 3 dB on a pretty fat Q. This one's more of a tighter Q, fat Q here. Uh, and then actually, I'm cutting at the high mids at 6,500 hertz. I'm cutting 2 dB. This is mostly for sibilance on a very tight Q right there. And then I'm actually um, reducing here, let me go to the high frequency, reducing just a tad at 9,000 uh, to a tune of 1.05 dB. I'm just trying to cut down, a, I mean, this, this mic has a ton of presence and sparkle. I'm just trying to cut down a little bit on that. Okay, so that is my EQ curve here on the Personas Revelator for the Sennheiser 416. And then that brings me to compression, which I always want last. Now, it's, it's great about this, uh, personas, you can actually flip-flop it. If you wanted compression first and then EQ, does it sound different to you? Probably not a whole bunch. Maybe a little bit. Tonality sound, sounds different. Here's the compressor first. Let me flip-flop it now. The compressor is after the EQ. All right, so it's pretty close. Um, gain, I've got set at 55. Peak reduction, I've got set at 60. This definitely models like an LA-2A. And I just, I'm trying to keep this thing constantly moving. I'm not trying to have it slammed all the way to the left on normal speech. But if I yell, right, it's going to obviously do its job and compress for me. So those are my settings there. It's great to have, again, real-time compression while I'm doing these videos, recording like this one or live streaming if I were. I can get to the limiter here, hard limiter at 0.5 dB. So basically, I just do not want to peak. That's all I'm trying to avoid here is ultimately, ultimately clipping. And so you can also see that I don't have any of the voice effects on, but I can turn this on too. Ooh, now this sounds bad on purpose. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the filters, hang on. I can also do vocoder. Okay, vocoder, ooh, that one's kind of spooky. Detuner, detuner. Or doubler, doubler. Now this one is maybe more useful, right, than some of the other ones. How about delay? Delay. delay. Anyway, so you can do some real-time effects on the Revelator, which again is just like the Apollo. Now, obviously, 
you know, the, I want to make clear here, the, the ecosystem of, of the Revelator is, is just what it is. Like, it's this. You don't have add-ons. You don't have any more plugins. It's the fat channel, and that's basically it. Um, versus something like the Apollo, where, yeah, you can buy more plugins, and the p possibilities and potential is basically limitless. Uh, versus here, where it's a little bit, it is a little bit more constrained. Uh, there's no question about that. But obviously, you have the ability and for the price point to do so much with this interface. It is very cool, including space. Enough of that. Okay, we're back on the 416 settings. And again, if I rotate this knob, you can see I have a couple a couple different 416 settings, but these are the ones that I've got saved. Okay, the other thing I want to show you here, and I'm not going to put myself on to keep keep me away from the screen so you can see it. This is my master mix. So this is what's going out of the back of the interface right now and into the A10 Mini to record this video or do my live streams. But I can also make a mix A. I can also make a mix B. And that's important because these are two mix minuses that I can send back out to, for example, Zoom, or like Microsoft Teams or OBS, however you want to do it, you can send two different mix minuses back out and have them be custom settings of what those mix minuses hear and what they don't hear. I'm not going to go into too much explanation of that on this video, but hopefully you understand. It also lets me under, understand this. I'm hearing the master mix right now. I can listen in on the mix A or on the mix B, but I do want to be listening to the master mix. Also, if you... If you just give me a second here, I'm going to pull up my soundboard. Let me show you one of the best parts of this and all the virtual channels is that I can actually isolate something like my soundboard separately from system playback and from a remote guest like on Zoom or somewhere else. So you could see I could bring that person up like the last person I interviewed. I had to, <laughs> had to be up a couple dBs to make them sit in the mix properly. I also usually have the soundboard here just a little bit lower than Unity. So when I'm playing something like this... Number one. Right? It appears on its own channel, which is great. All these virtual number two channels give you the ability. Number three. And I'm being very uh, careful here in what I do play and don't play so that I don't get uh, copyright busted. But yeah, the ability to separate everything on these virtual channels is huge. You can see to go into this one, I'm on virtual B, channels one and two. This is for Ago, by the way. I've got a separate video on that. Great soundboard for... Um, the Mac platform, the Apple platform, but I can play it all right back into this, its very own channel, and it just, it simplifies things. And this is, again, all of this for a sub $200 interface. Um, I, am, I am just absolutely blown away by this. It's got the ability here to rotate through the, uh, the monitor output, which is, by the way, what I'm using to uh, send audio to the ATEM. I can also adjust my headphone volume. Now, I will say that I've got this thing cranked up all the way for my for my cans, and these are only 32 ohm uh, DT 770s. So the headphone amp in here, uh, not particularly strong. I just want to point that out. It'll work on you know 7506s, uh, some Audio Technica headsets for the most part. It's going to work across the board. But if you get into like a 80 or maybe even a 250 ohm uh, pair of headset or headphones, it it may not be able to entirely power that for you. I just want to be honest about it. But again, that that might be one of the only downsides. When you look at this device, it does so much hardware-wise, software-wise. It's great. It's portable. And for the cost, like I said, the ability to, to run through this fat channel and process your audio in real time and sort things out, uh, put them all on their own channels here, virtual channels, uh, this is truly a, a, a great get. I'm glad I've got it. I'm glad I've been using it. I've had zero problems with it. So can't recommend it enough. That is the Revelator IO24 by Personas. Hey, thanks for being here on the channel. You've watched this long. Thumbs up on this video if it provided you some value. And subscribe to the channel so I can see you next time with some more great content.